All right, so welcome back to File Format Reverse Engineering. This is the fourth video in the series, and we're gonna be talking about digging just a little bit deeper and how we can locate or correlate some of this file writing or actions that happen uh, inside a process monitor to the actual binary application. So I have R2G Launcher Demo loaded inside of Binary Ninja, and I have uh, the start function listed here. So now what I want to do is try to understand where things sort of originate from. If we scroll through some of the binaries here, I'll have some marked ones. Uh, there's also, if I go to the import address table, there's going to be some things that are imported by ordinal, which I'll have to look up manually, and then some other things, get cursor position, clip cursor, uh, other things that we sort of know what they are. Um, so this can be very helpful. What I can do is try to find like the right file, go to that particular location where those are called, um, and then try to find uh, offsets that uh, like cross references that actually call that and start setting some breakpoints and start naming some of these things. Um, but there are a lot of functions in here. So if there are wrapper functions that call these things, we need to know what the heck they are. So Binary Ninja has a Python console. So we can go to BV as a binary view and I can do binary view functions. Uh, will give me all of the functions that there are in this. Uh, so if we get the length of this, there's uh, 34,404. So obviously we're not gonna go through 34,404 and start analyzing these things. What we wanna do is try to jump directly to a location uh, that is interesting to us. So what we can do now is go back to process monitor and kind of go up to the beginning of where we were sort of documenting this whole structure here. And we wanna know where this comes from. So what it can do is right click on this and hit stack. So stack comes from the properties window. If I go to properties and then just click on the stack, um, it gives us this information. This is a call stack. So from NTDLL, in user mode, which is the U, and then kernel mode is the K, uh, we start going up this way and building up a stack where uh, we sort of leave the, the application is where we want to go to. So we left the application to kernel-based DLL, which was write file, some offset of that. So I want to find this address. Now, um, this could be rebased once it actually gets loaded. So when we come back into uh, Binary Ninja, we have to remember that for the most part, Windows executables, 32-bit uh, Windows executables, this is 32-bit, right? Yeah. Um, are going to be loaded um, at 400,000 hex, right? So we'll see up here, there's 400,000 hex. And we can kind of consider that our base. That's where the MZ file header uh, ends up being. This can move around, uh, but that'll be sort of like where the image is actually located. So where it says R2G launcher demo.exe plus some offset equals this, uh, we can assume that this R2G launcher demo.exe actually equals 400,000 hex. So what I'm gonna do is write down this value, 68C730, and I want to add 400,000 hex to that. This is a Python console, so I can do that in here. So I'll do hex of 0x68c730 plus 400,000 hex. That gives me this. So I'll copy that, hit G to jump or go to. Uh, <laughs> and not in Windows anymore. And then Mac, so command, jump, go. All right, here is the location of that write file. So I don't know what this function does just yet, but I don't wanna spend time actually going through it. So I'm gonna rename pressing N, and I'm gonna do a little trick where I uh, prepend everything with Z, pick this up in um, a malware reverse engineering, uh, in a lab I worked in with a lot of other people sharing uh, IDA Pro databases. So we would always, anytime an analyst would mark something or document something, uh, they we would all underscore it with Z, so that way we can tell um, whether or not it was somebody in the lab who actually named it, or if it was something that came from like a flirt signature or some other um, source. 
All right, so Z underscore, I'm gonna do save, uh, what was the name of this file? Cards.dat. Now, obviously, this is probably used for a lot more stuff um, than just saving the cards.dat. But right now, it gives me sort of like a breadcrumb uh, to know where this can actually be called. So there's two different locations where this can be called. Um, save cards.dat. And then what I'll do is let's go take a look at some other locations, right? So in the application, I can actually trace this all the way up and figure out where it comes from. Um, the next path, or if I go down one, it's a 68C571. So 68C571, I can actually just type it here instead of pre-calculating it. So we'll do 400,000 hex, uh, which is this. All right, so we have 6... 68C, 68C571, right. I'll copy this, and then this lay. So we are inside of A8C4CD, this guy. So this is the path that we're actually taking here. Um, so now this guy uh, has a bunch of um, cross-references as well. So if we want to know one other level down, I can just come down to here. So this time it's going to be 680507, 680507, 680570. Okay. here that does not seem right so 680507 okay uh, and there we go so there's a location to that and we are inside of a804c8 a804c8 so it's this guy all right so we can actually build up the entire call stack up to that point because all of that stuff is given to us here so we can figure out where the sort of base where this whole structure was sort of initialized uh, when we started reading or writing this particular guy and then we can start mapping this whole chain down and just focus on uh, analyzing these particular functions to try to understand what's actually happening here um, now there's no debugger built into binary ninja yet so I'd have to attach like Ida Pro or um, WinDebug or something. But what I'd want to do is make sure that I attach my uh, breakpoints to these locations and try to follow any logical data that's coming from here all the way down to this guy. Because at this guy, the entire buffer that's written, meaning uh, that the three bytes at offset zero or the 46 bytes at offset three are already here when we get to this particular location on the call stack. They may start originating from here, or they may be sort of computed or written here or something. So we need to understand why there are so many calls between this very first initializer down to here. So um, mapping that whole process out will allow us to just kind of focus on the main areas or chunks of the process of the application that we want to focus on that are related to saving data to that file. So now if I go to avatars, maybe avatars.dat has a completely different call stack. And I'll open that up and look at this. And in fact, the location where this came from and this came from are completely different. So we have this 5AB, let me write this down and we'll just do this. Then I think you kind of get the point for. So again, 400,000 hex is our base. 5A, 2B, 3, 4. Copy that one and go here. Uh, there's a copy file. So oh, there goes copy file. Interesting. Did I get... Uh, so it's read file. Is that being called from that? So let's go to the right file here. 
wasn't comparing um, apples to apples. So this guy, 52A3, still a different location, 5234. Three, four. Um, so that comes from this location here, which is a call to copy file. Um, if we look at um, copy file. was it copy file ex? Uh, no copy file w. Wish I knew what other pieces copy file actually digs down into. So there might be some other things that actually get called. So I'm looking at here is these two locations that I highlighted and said find the stack for um, actually had the same exact uh, stack offsets, which I didn't expect. So let's go down to another one real fast, just to get a clearer example. Um, all right, so achievements. We've already looked at the cards. This is a create file, close file, a bunch of create file stuff. I want write files. So let me just add a new thing here. The operation is gonna contain Right. All right, so here's our avatars dat here. And go to the stack. Um, 68C730, okay, that is the right. So um, this call stack might be the same, it might be different. We can see where they sort of diverge. So this was slot one, which is I think is the one I want. And let's see if they end up being sort of like exactly the same all the way down. Okay, six one five zero. So this call stack for all of these ends up being exactly the same. It looks like. Oh, here's a divergence, I think. Um, just gonna put these side by side here. All right, so these are the same, this is 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 the same, this, all right, this is where it sort of goes haywire, I think, yeah. So then we wanna, if all of this stuff remains the same for writing um, the cards, or the, uh, if we go to the event, it's avatars.dat. And then over here, this is cards.dat. There's probably something very specific to this location um, that this guy sort of like diverges, right? And then they sort of come back together up here. So if I was trying to narrow this down even further, what I would do is just go to these locations. This is gonna be the chunk uh, nine six zero seven nine one twenty three twenty one ninety six. Uh, that's up there. These guys are going to be responsible for writing the uh, cards dot dot, and then all of these guys are going to be responsible for doing uh, stuff with the avatars dot dot. So this is where I want to focus. This stuff here in the beginning and the stuff at the end are going to be the same for probably writing every type of data file. So really focusing in this location and this location are going to be um, two ways to kind of dig down into application data that's much more specific to what we're attempting to do. Hopefully that will make sense and kind of guide you in the right path for uh, file format reverse engineering on Windows. Um, hope you learned something new. That's it. Thanks. Thank you.